three, two. Welcome to another edition of Guy Talk with Joe and Thor. And this is our, today we're going to talk a little bit about working out martial arts. What got us in? What is the benefits? And uh, why do we do it? Why do we keep on doing it? Why do we stay sexy and dangerous? And um, so, okay, of course, let me uh, throw out there, follow Thor at Red Pill Thor on Instagram and for his services, coaching, guidance. You, you, they can hit you in the DMs, right? Correct? Absolutely. Just hit me on the DM. Website's not up yet. It'll be up in a few weeks. So, Well, my website is up proudmasculine.com also at instagram at proudmasculine we ask that you please like comment and subscribe and also if there's any other topics you wish to hear discussed between thor and i relating to anything what we're talking about now and you want to hear more in depth or something else you want to hear that we haven't discussed yet drop it in the comments and we will put it together Ain't that Absolutely. right? Absolutely. I think between you and me, we got quite a few years of experience in doing a lot of things, don't we? Absolutely. So, yeah, we got a lot we could uh, we could talk about. Learned a lot of lessons the hard way, gentlemen. We're going to talk about working out today. Uh, maybe some martial arts. Both of us have experience there. What the benefits are. Just to do a disclaimer up front. None of this is medical advice or advice on working out. Strictly opinion. Uh, before you begin any workout program, uh, consult the physician. Now, both of us uh, are in our 40s or late 50s, so uh, if you're anywhere near that age group, certainly look to your health first before you start an exercise program. Yeah. Don't go in the gym trying to keep up with the 20-year-olds. Yeah, we call that ego lifting. Don't do that. In fact, any age, don't do that. I do it. I'm guilty. <laughs> I've done I it, too. <laughs> yeah, especially I pay the price I every time. Especially when I was in the Gracie Jiu-Jitsu back in the 90s. <laughs> That, that's really where my fitness journey started was back in 1992. I did a, a, a little demo class at a Torrance uh, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu Academy called the Gracie Academy. And I, by 19, end of 1993, I had joined and my instructor had won the ultimate uh, fighting championship, Ace Gracie. And I stuck there and I joined the apprentice program. I earned all my stripes with my uh, blue belt there. Uh, did that for about six years and I spent a year with Pedro Carvalho and he awarded me my purple belt and I spent another few years doing that actually cornering and training some uh, fighters and uh, one of them was pretty successful uh, definitely in 2006 to 8 era was a top five heavyweight fighter and I enjoyed the shit out of it. it was wonderful but I did have a lot of injuries from playing that game as an old man <laughs> and I have not practiced uh, the Brazilian Jiu Jitsu or Muay Thai in 15 years. I wish I could. I would love to if I had a group of older guys like you, Joe, that just was really interested in the love of the technique because it's like a language, you know, it's a beautiful thing. And and uh, just the raw skill and competition to do that. I love the drills, but most of the young guys that learn this really, there's a lot of a lot of drive to just tap men. It's a, it's a very wonderful feeling, but you, you get really aggressive because you actually start to see this work in front of you. And it's a little bit injury prone. Good instructors can keep the injuries down, but it does wear your body out eventually. So you should be judicious with it. I know plenty of guys that are my age or older that do it. They don't do it every night. And that was my problem. I want to do it every day, every night, every morning. <laughs> you got two hooked on it, right? So, and I did that. I lifted a small amount of weights and then I started pursuing my career. And in my career, I gave it all up until I got sick. And when I came back from sick nine years ago, I said, never again, I'm getting in shape. And I started with the kettlebell journey. Uh, I learned kettlebells and I got in fantastic shape around 51 years old. After a year being 52 of kettlebells, completely natural athlete. I was up to 186 pounds, about 11% body fat, good flexibility, functionality was very good. In fact, I would say if you learned how to do the kettlebells properly and do a, a full cycle or set uh, anywhere from 20 to 40 minutes long with the right weight. It was mm -hmm. the equivalent of rolling in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, very physical like wrestling. So it's right. not cardio, it's not hit, it's, it's in between, it's high, high intensity, weight resistance, high volume. So it's a very different method. Uh, are you gonna get jacked and buff? No, you'll get jacked, 
but you'll be lean like a fighter one day yeah. and, and strong. Uh, but having done that every day for 18 months, I had a good friend of mine shift me into what's called aesthetic training, which involves weight resistance training. And we started that out, Joe, with full body movements, compound movements, standard weights, standard uh, repetition in case, not a five by five, but you know, eight to 12 reps, you know, three to five sets, full body, you know, one to two sets per body part. And we do that three days a week. And we did that for a good year. Uh, eventually, I gained enough weight. I gained 18 pounds that first year doing that. And then I struggled gaining weight. Uh, and I was right in that mid 190s at 11%, 10% body fat. And I wanted to get to the next level. Um, and uh, then I started doing modified isolation exercises, which really increased the volume, but it reduced my chance of injury. Uh, I still do compounds like squats, but I do a slow cadence, you know, two to, to, to six seconds per rep, high volume, which would be, yeah, it would be six to 12 uh, reps, but I'm talking 10 sets of an exercise and 80% max. And when you do your reps that slow for that long, your weights are going to come down. You form is everything. As soon as you lose form, you start losing risk on your joints and things like that. So it's really kind of a modified bro split it, but as I've learned, let me back up. My first year of weight training, I did have, I was diagnosed with low testosterone and I went on hormone replacement. That was four years ago, almost five. And uh, it, it's an amazing, it's an amazing component of, of anti-aging when you are low on testosterone and other hormones and you balance that with your estrogen pregnenolone, DHEA, your vitamin supplementation, and a good diet, uh, also blood sugar regulation. It's amazing. You can feel very godlike, and you perform like you know, a 30-year-old man. That's very wonderful. That set aside, I did go into a modified bro split because my recovery times, even at my age, is not what it used to be, even on HRT. Um, big muscle groups take a week to recover. So there's no more real full body workouts like I used to do. I'll split it up and lower a couple times, you know, once a week, and then kettlebells will be once a week. So it works out to about four days a week, sometimes five. Now, each session lasts in between 30 and 45 minutes, depending on how much time I want between sets. It's, it'll wind you. I'm looking to really fill the, the, the muscles with blood and get that volume. And since I've been doing that for two and a half years, my average weight gain is slow. It's about two and a half pounds a year. Uh, this year I've gained the most weight. I've gained uh, 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 four pounds this year. I'm at 208 pounds right now. I would like to be 212 by the end of the year, but at the current rate, I prefer to gain muscle and not much fat. I stay at 12% or below. So I start modifying my diet and do a little restriction if it gets too low. I like having an eight pack. I don't know about you, but I like having it. I like seeing it. I use the mirrors as part of the aesthetic training tool. Slow down, mind in the muscle. That's my thing. But I also don't want to live in that gym. That's why it's only four days. In some, some weeks, it's, it's only three. I'll do three days in there. So it, it's a bit more detailed than that. But uh, just as we do this conversation, I can, I, can, I can talk about what I've done. But on my channel, I've got some breakdowns, which is essentially the same workout. It's the one I, I did, the course I have, which is a five or six part series. It's working out at home with a kettlebell pull-up bar using the resistance bands instead of the, you know, uh, the cable machine or the Smith machine. You could do everything that I got in this gym at home for very minimal money if you want to. And the benefit is, God, you feel great. You sleep great. Sex is fantastic. The ladies like it. And you feel good about yourself. I mean, that's the benefit. Who wouldn't want that? And guys respect you when they see that you worked out because any guy worth his salt knows the work you got to put in. Yes, you got the nice, oh, Thor, he's on steroids. That's why he's like that. Okay, yeah. Well, let me tell you something. Nothing works unless you do the work. And I'm not on steroids. I'm it's on bioidentical hormones. <laughs> I'm on bioidentical hormones, doctor prescribed by a very famous doctor that's in the rejuvenative business. So if it is that's fucking it. steroids, it, that's not how it works. You don't shoot in your ass and go sit on your sofa and eat dominoes and watch Netflix. 
and then a week later you fucking jack with eight percent body fat it's not usually how it that's, works usually that's an ego response be, that that's that is a defense mechanism yeah for the guy to say oh he's got this reason that's somewhat shady in a yeah. morality sense so I wouldn't do that because I'm above it. It's a way to put yourself above. I've heard it all. And discount the work as yeah. part of the ego defense. Because and what they're really work. saying is I'm not willing to do what that guy did because I'm afraid I wouldn't be able to look as good or accomplish what he has. So I'm not even going to bother. I'm just going to find a reason. And some of it's ignorance too. Yeah, but that's okay. Yeah, I welcome it. There's um, just as many that come to me in, in their early 30s or 40s and goes, man, I want to do what you did. How long have you been doing this? Oh, yeah, that's yeah. a long time. I was thinking maybe I could do this for three months. I said, no, 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 I've been doing this for years. But that's yeah. okay because the biggest results, the most massive results come from small actions over time. Yes. That's one of the reasons I preach injury-free. I'm not going to ego lift. I'm not going to risk injury. I will kill a set if I feel a twinge. I will stop for the day. Why? I've had enough injuries in my life doing working out, jujitsu, Muay Thai, and even at work that an injury, even a small one to your shoulder can put you out for 12 weeks. That's 12 weeks of maybe me doing just legs. Mm. I don't want that. I don't have that kind of time. Dude, I mean, I want 20 inch arms by the time I'm 60 and I'm only an inch and a half away. You got that. So, you know, I don't, I don't want I, I, the injury puts me down, and then you, and then yeah. So I would rather avoid all the injuries and have a guy say, "Oh, he quit for today." Yeah, but I'll be back tomorrow. <laughs> so live to fight another day, right? Yes, sir. What about you, man? How'd you get involved in all the uh, the fitness thing? Well, uh, I mean, I was always an active, you know, young man, kid, young man. Like I was always. I was a maniac. I mean, I, I didn't stop. I was in sports and, you know, later on down the line. It was encouraged in school when I was young. I'm not so sure. Yeah, when I was young, you anymore. played tackle football at recess yeah. and you swung from the monkey balls. And you... Yeah, we played it out in the streets on the asphalt. Yeah. If I remember yeah. right. We did two-hand touch on the asphalt, but it was rough. Like, you get shoved yeah. in the mailbox. Oh, yeah. Cars and shit. <laughs> yeah. But, um, so – as far as weight training, I didn't get involved with that until I was in my late 20s. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Weird Why? Enough. Why did you do it? Well, I ran into some uh, hard times in my marriage when I was in my late 20s, after my son was born. And uh, I was working with a couple of guys. This is, I was an iron worker. Well, I just hired on with this new company, newly formed company. I was working with some old fellas that I worked with at a previous company. And um, they were into lifting. At the time, I weighed, you know, like 145, 150 pounds. But I was always this cock-strong, skinny motherfucker. And so I'd, um, like, I think I was one of those guys that just didn't see it as, like, I'd see the muscle heads, and I'm like, man, I got, I'd rather be fishing or some shit. You know what I mean? Than being in the gym. Well, one of the uh, superintendents on the job, he's like, why don't you start coming to the gym with us? And I was like, yeah, whatever, you know. We were going through some hard times on my marriage. So was he. He was actually divorcing. And him and I just kind of, you know, bonded over that experience. Mm -hmm. And we kind of became lifting buddies. Yeah. And um, I was 28 at the time. And that was the first time I did testosterone. Mm -hmm. And I went from 145, and I didn't do it, like, prescribed. I did it recreationally. Yeah. No, I'm totally cool with it, man. I know I know what it can do. There's another conversation we have to bring it up because it affects men terribly in today's society worldwide and women, too. There's, oh, yeah. It's, there's an issue with it, and it's not because there's too much. Mm -hmm. it's, there's not enough. No, look around. They have definitely too much testosterone floating around a lot of men these days. Good God. No. But uh, so I started training. And, and I mean, I was always strong. I walked in, you know, and I'd work out with at 145 pounds on my bench was at 185. Wow. Yeah. I wasn't weak. I mean, I just, did, that was my genetics. I, we, we didn't have big people in our family. But then I went from 145, 150 
in four months, I was like 185, fucking jacked and strong. Nice. And, you know, about that time, my wife and I started experiencing more and more problems. Well, then I started noticing the value of aesthetics and yes. looking like a fucking Jack meathead does to women's brains. And, you know, I got to see the effect of that firsthand. And then, then I kind of like really enjoyed the work after that. I mean, I enjoyed the challenge of the growth. I enjoyed the challenge of upping the weight. I enjoyed the challenge of being disciplined, showing up at the gym, even when I didn't feel like it, eating right. You know, it's so nuanced. Right. To train aesthetically is so <coughs> nuanced. You just don't yeah. go in and fling weights around. It's, it's pretty, and, pretty nuanced for sure. And that's why I said these people who say shit like, oh, he's on juice. That doesn't mean shit. Like that, that's not the magic pill. That's a, no. it'll help you. And I mean, and guys at our age taking a therapeutic dose is not a real cheat code either. It's not no, like- it's, it's just putting you back at 30. I mean, super physiologic doses would improve my ability to recover. I could probably do two major muscle groups yeah. in a week. But here's my thing. Injury can still occur. I, I, I am getting older. The ligaments are a little bit more not as, not as flexible, right? They get fragile, mm -hmm. things like that. So Brittle. yes, yeah, you could do it. I mean, there's been guys that get huge even in a little older age, but they're on super physiologic doses. And what it actually does is just improves your ability to recover. Yeah, you know? that's all you're doing. And then, so, uh, you know, and now, now the values for me is, yeah, I like looking good, but it's, it's so much more than that. And you know, mm -hmm. my... The program, when I take these men in and put them under a program, the jumping off point is fitness, is the mm -hmm. physical. Not because, not outcome is, is you're going to look good, but this is the thinking behind it. This is the whole fucking model is you, you coming in, you telling me your fitness goal is to lose 30 pounds. You know, a lot of these guys are in the high 20s in body fat. Mm -hmm. overweight, weak, physically weak, and, you know, terrible diets, you know, you know, the whole gig, but, and so uh, the platform is using fitness as your springboard in to propel you into the rest of the successful and to success in the other areas of life. If you can get, take yourself, you give me three months and you come to me and I'll give you a, a, you know, an actual case where a guy is 23, five foot six, 230 pounds, can't do two push ups, can't do one pull up, cardio shit, you already know that, uh, uh, plus 25% body fat, just, and then to go from that in six months, he dropped 21 pounds. You know, now he can do 25 push-ups at a time. And he's, his before and after pictures, you know, he dropped from plus 25% body fat down to 20% body fat or 18%, sub 20, 18% body fat. And you would see the difference that makes. Mm -hmm. And so six months later, as we track it month to month to month, how you doing with this? How you doing with that? I give him the workout. My, my philosophy is full body. That's just my gig, mm -hmm. and that's what I've had the most success with, and that's mm -hmm. what I can help people with. I have an experience with that. Totally support that, yeah. And so in six months, well, six months later, and this dude, you know, he looks like a totally different man, and he's talking to me like a totally different man, like he's sitting up straight, he's assertive, and I'm like, dude, do you realize everything you fucking did, you were disciplined, you were committed, you offered no excuses. You put the work in. You went to the gym, you know, when you were jacked up and psyched about going. And you went to the gym when it was snowing and you didn't feel like it when you'd rather sit home and rest on the sofa because you have a hard day's work. So perseverance, commitment, discipline, application, you know, and all these little things added up to success. I said, now, do you understand that you can take everything you've applied to changing your physical appearance to anything else in your life and get the same fucking result. That's why. And that's why I work out. 
it Absolutely. keeps me sharp. It keeps me sharp. And it keeps me reminded the days I don't want to go to the gym. When, when you and I get off, I have to go finish my workout. You know, I got cut short early because I had to, uh, I had a meeting scheduled with a client. So I had to cut my workout short. I got to go finish up. I don't feel like going to finish up. I'm being honest with you. So you got some quit to, in you. Yeah. You got a little bit of quit in you. We'll get ready. But guess of that. what? I'll walk into that gym fucking yep. moping and pouting, but I'm going to go do it. And I never feel bad when I leave. No, some of those are the best workouts. Now, what I think about that is that definitely when you're working with the younger guys, it's a, it's the, the exercise, regardless of what it is, it could be martial arts, it could be the weightlifting. It is a crucible or a catalyst that supplants that rite of passage that actually teaches you, it teaches you more than words can really express on how to behave and get what you want and the work that has to go into it. Yeah. Now, now for me, they ask me why I work out. Well, son, I want to be an apex poon predator. That's why I work out. <laughs> it does go a long way. I just want to go at an extra level down. I do it for the poon. But then, like, for my martial arts, uh, so I did, I took up boxing when I was about 13. And uh, we had a pretty good, we had a really good little amateur gym. It was a neighborhood gym. You know, a lot of guys I knew went to, you know, everybody boxed. And then I had to move away. I'd gotten kicked out of school. So I had to go live with my dad in another parish. And uh, he didn't agree with me boxing and said it was stupid. So he pulled me out. And when I came back, I boxed a little bit more when I was able to come back to school here. I think it was like two years later. And then uh, I'd gotten in some trouble when I was 18 that's a whole nother show, but somebody who, you know, kind of like a mentor for the young guys in our neighborhood, he was a sensei, a Shotokan sensei. Oh, and he had been involved with Shotokan since he was a boy, nine years old. And he was steeped, steeped in tradition. It wasn't just for him to learn how to kick a punch. Like he embodied the martial arts, the discipline, the character, the, you know, seeing the endeavor, you know, as he liked to say it, you know, pursuing the endeavors. Like he was steeped in tradition of the Japanese martial art. Like he was very traditional and he could even speak Japanese. He used to teach the class in Japanese. It was pretty cool. Bushido. Well, um, and he kind of, not kind of, he directly got me out of trouble. He's like, here's your stipulations. I'm going to get you out of jail, but and he held up a thing in the wall. I got you a lawyer and I got you a job. You know, he's putting the stuff on the glass in the visitor's booth. And he said, but here's the stipulations. I got you this job. You're going to show up to work on time every day. Every week, you're going to pay me back X amount of dollars until your lawyer fees are paid. And until you pay me off, you come in a karate and you come in a show to come. I'm like, okay. So better than being in here. <laughs> no. That's damn cool. Yeah. Well, I'm telling you, this guy was nobody to play with. And I remember one that was around Mardi Gras and, and I had, I was uh, hooking up with this chick and I needed some money to go party. And I tried to call him on Friday and say, hey, look, I might be a little short this week. And he was very matter of fact. He's like, okay, well, um, well, look, next time I see you, I'm going to break your fucking arm, okay? I'm like, all right, I'll be over in a minute. Oh, you know, and he wasn't playing because I've seen him do things. Mm -hmm. Anyhow, um, well, that kind of fiend, waned off and, uh, you know, I wound up doing other shit with my time because I was so smart at 18. I knew I had all the answers and, you know, I kind of got diverted by other things. Yeah, sure, sure. And then later in life, I, you know, many years later, which is actually just a few years ago, is when I jumped on the mat and got involved nice. in some BJJ. Yeah, which, yeah, yeah. <laughs> man, uh, you know, I'm a white belt. Isn't I'm that raw. like jumping in the deep end of the swimming pool? <laughs> yeah, well, so let me tell you. You know, here I am at the time, I was 185, fucking jacked, probably 7% body fat, strong as an ox. And um, they took that I all away from now. you, didn't they? Hmm? <laughs> they took that all away from you, didn't they? Oh, that didn't mean anything. I, I just assumed <laughs> went there in a fucking cast. I know it. I was dead. So he puts me up against this little 140 pound dude who's about five foot 
six, five foot seven at best. Really fun. Everybody in the class was super nice. Like nobody was a ego driven dick. You know what I mean? Like I'm expecting these guys. So I'm just like walking all killers. in there. Well, he puts me up against this 140 pound guy and he's like, Hey, this is Mike, Mike. Uh, this is Joe. We want you to take him through the class. And I'm like, yeah, nice to meet you. Give a chance. I give him a nice firm handshake to let him know he's about to get wiped up. But you know, this dude tore my ass up Thor. Tore me. Been through up. it. Been through it. I'm thinking I'm strong. This dude ain't no way this dude. He just rode me like a surfboard, tied me up every time. There's nothing I could do. No. Nope. By the end of the class, I was a humble man. Let me put it to you oh, like yeah. that. Yeah. And the instructor, so at, toward the end of the class, the instructor, they started pairing off, and the instructor said, Come on, I'm gonna work with you to finish up. Mm-hmm. And he wasn't that big either. But he was a badass. He actually competed. Mm-hmm. And you know, he was a champion. He wasn't but like it's the same thing. And we got up on the mat. He's like, dude, you're strong as an ox, but it doesn't mean shit. He said, all I'm going to do is sit there and let you wiggle around till you're out of breath. Do you understand that? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, and they're always thinking three steps ahead. It's like psychology. That's the thing. That's why it's like a language. You know? That's what he said. I'm going to set you up. I'm going to make you do this. You're going to do this. Then I do this. And then you do that. And then I do this. Then you do that. And then I do this. And it's all over for you. <laughs> Pretty much, right? just use your yeah. resistance against you. And so, so let me let me put us back on track just for a second. So you take on a client today. Typically, what do you do with your clients? Because they come to you for fitness. I mean, I've seen your Facebook. You're in very good shape. Um, no, this wasn't even about fitness. No, I, I mean, uh, what do you do today when you talk a guy into doing your class? They, they consult you on fitness, correct? Not in all of them. It doesn't always no, start no, okay. there. If but you, you push them there, huh? Oh yeah. I'm, I'll, I'll, I'll always encourage that. Yeah. Do you, you, well, I can't I've, I've actually really... had some, I've actually had some female clients uh, doing no, the aesthetic stuff. So it's interesting. Not I will always, always preach fitness because, and I can't sit here and put in the words, the value when you're getting your fitness and your physical in check. Okay. I can't put that into words. I mean, it's something no. that it's a, it's a re, it's an outcome that you have to experience to understand when I say it. You know, because you've been there. Oh, yeah. And there's other people out there, there's guys out there who know exactly what I'm talking about. I, I need to be able to move and be very physical. Um, and I want to do that right until the end. And if this cost me to stay in shape and to be that physical and that functional, if it cost me a couple of years off my life, I say, so be it. I'll ride that boat right into the rocks at full speed. I don't want to be adrift, not able to walk mm-hmm. in a wheelchair. Now, that's not to say it couldn't happen and I had to fight through that. I'll do it. But that's not my preferred way to go. I want to, I want to, keep, I want to keep this earth suit maintained in its highest level of performance because that's what this is. This is an earth suit. This is a suit we're given. And you should respect it and move in that direction for sure. I believe that too. I, I feel a little bad for us people in the West right now. We haven't really been taught that that's what this is. I mean, you look at the average weights of young people today, or even the women at 167.8 pounds for a five foot four woman from the ages 18 to 60. And just, you know, 30 years it's ago, atrocious. 124 pounds. There is a health problem with being that overweight and yes i'm all about body positivity but when i say body positivity you do the best you can to be the best version of yourself that you can and there's nothing negative about that but to use body positivity as an excuse to say i'm just as good and just as healthy hmm that's not it's a lie and any man who says it knows deep down that he's telling himself a lie and they don't feel it's hard it's very harmful no, I'm not living with the dad bod. This right here, this is a father figure, not a dad bod. So. And so not, not only, you know, and look, the part of it is vanity. I'm not going to lie to you. I Absolutely. like looking good. I like being in good shape. But you don't realize the, how far the reach is as far as the benefits go. People see you in a job interview. They're going to pay more attention to you. They're going to take you serious. They're going to say, well, this guy – knows how to apply himself. This guy knows how to see something through. Now, clearly this guy has some self-discipline. Clearly this guy cares. 
clearly this guy has, sees something other most people don't. You're going to be considered just because of the way you look, the way you keep yourself. Women are going to look at you. They're going to know this is a strong, masculine fucking dude. You know, he's got muscles. They, I feel safer with him. He looks like somebody who can take care of me. He looks somebody he can throw me around. Like they admire that. They look up to that. And, and it taps into their feral brains. Like they see, you take your shirt off and you got a six pack, like something happens. Yeah. Socially they won't admit it, but it's 100% true. Yeah. And I hear, I hear it all the time. I don't like a buff guy. Yeah. Right. It's not true when it comes to brass tacks. 100% no, not true. It's not true. And so there's so but, much more value than what? just the, the guys that aren't in shape. They love hearing that girls keep saying it. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, you know how women are. They're going to say whatever needs to be said in that moment. Oh, God, yes. Despite, you know, despite their little hind brains, like firing off like a V8 Mustang. Like when they see you, they just, they still going to say, no, I want a guy who likes puppies and poetry and bullshit. Yeah, I like puppies, so. I like puppies. Poetry. I love puppies. I got my yeah, own dog, puppy. Dog, dogs are, that's another show. Dogs are good. Loyalty. They, they have more loyalty than human beings. <laughs> Absolutely. That's why I love them so much. They're easy. And we made them that way. Yeah. So we can make ourselves that way if we want. Well, <clears throat> and then and then to continue my martial arts spiel, you know, you know, I ripped my shoulders shit last year and I have not been back on the mat, but I've I've taken up Krav Maga again, which I had a brief scent with. Okay. In which I'm I'm loving it, dude. And, and you know, the martial arts is for, and you know what I compared jujitsu to, what it did for me, the value it had for me, other than just learn how to roll and, you know, leverage. It was like, I compare it to yoga, martial mm -hmm. arts, yoga. Like I'd be rolling and mixed up in a set and like, I'd just go to another place where you have to be there and attentive and present in that moment. And you have to be, feeling what this guy's doing you have to be anticipating the next move according to how he's gonna like it just you have to pay attention every second and you have to keep your emotions in check because you have to stay loose and you have to stay flexible yeah you understand mm -hmm. so that was a lot of value other than just i know bjj and taking pictures with the gi to put on instagram and um krav maga is a practical self-defense tool you know and i think so many people live naively thinking that there aren't dangerous fucking people in this world that will hurt you they have predators in this world that will take advantage of you that will come take your shit that will harm you and the people you love mm -hmm. and and i this is what i tell my son the the best way to not get in a fight the best way to not get fucked with is to know how to fight mm -hmm. and I know when I, I know when I see somebody in public that knows how to handle themselves, I can tell. Mm -hmm. And so can the people who pick out prey and marks. They know too. They know who's the easy pickings. They know the low hanging fruit. You know. And it just doesn't add up to having muscles. Like they can just tell. I know I can tell. I know I know guys who can I can pick a guy out of a crowd who knows how to throw down, who knows how to take care of himself mm -hmm. easily. And people like to live in this little bubble where, and especially these days, when I was young growing up, we fought, we got in fights and that, we did it. And now like my son, I don't think he's ever been in a fist fight and he's 16. So, and then people live in this naive like bubble where if I just, if I'm nice to everybody and I keep my head straight. I don't make eye contact. I never get fucked with. And that's not reality. At some point, somebody's going to see something they want that you have, and they know they can take it. They're coming to get it. And they're not going to be nice about it when they do. Yeah. And believe me, my first option is to not get involved in violence. I don't like it. I like doing you know. it when I'm practicing and competing. I like the aggression that I use to apply myself there, but my first option is to get away. If somebody comes talking shit, I'm like, all right, you know, I'm, I'm out. Martial I'm not gonna... arts are contained and measured out. 
violence. Every man should know how mm. to utilize violence. Absolutely. And always is it extremely attractive to both men and women. It's not that uncontrolled violence. It's the very controlled and measured violence. It's yes. important to being masculine. Absolutely. And and Krav Maga provides a measure of, I get to release that aggression. And that's another thing, men, these days, and this has been probably the last 20 years, correct me if I'm wrong, but men are being shamed for being aggressive. And that's, you know, they make, you know, and this goes to the point of raising the defective women. Like, we're aggressive creatures. We're full of fucking testosterone and we're competitive and we're aggressive and you know, we like doing shit. We like exerting ourselves physically. It's nothing to be ashamed of to have a place to go release that. Yeah. You know, some cultures, uh, th these little boys train martial arts and so from the time they're young, you know, to have that outlet they and be protectors. What's that? Women have an expression of violence. They do. It's called administrative violence. And they use social violence all the time. They know how to do it. It's, it's socially, it's with words. It's how they manipulate each other. Yeah. It's oh, another yeah. form of violence. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like, oh, that skirt looks nice on you. Shorter than usual, huh? Well, you know, no catty bitches. They do. But, um, so yeah, so, and then let, let's be honest here. I don't ever want to be seen as a man as not dangerous. And the older we get, you know, the perception is the less dangerous we are. And I don't want to be, I don't want to feel like that. You know what I mean? I don't want to be perceived as that. No, because then you're not valued. Mm -hmm. It's true. You know. But. At, le at least by many, so. Good talk, brother. Yeah. Mm, about that time, huh? I got to get running. Yeah, we've been at it for, for a little while. And uh, let's wrap this thing up and we'll do it again. Maybe we'll, uh, we'll do a little bit more planning. We'll talk about uh, hormone therapy for older uh, men and women at some point in the future. I got a lot I can share about that with folks, at least opinion-wise and maybe even resource-wise. Yeah. To improve your life. Sounds good. Once again, Red Pill Four. You can you can hit me up on Instagram. I have a couple spots open for clients right now as far as uh, life optimization coaching. It covers the gamut from fitness to diet to even uh, career counseling as far as craft, uh, union activities, things like that. Uh, if you're there, I've done a lot of that as well. I can, can at least point you in the right direction. Uh, in a few weeks, the website hopefully will be up, and that will be becomedurable.com. Until then, it's Red Pill Thor on Instagram. Drop me a line and we'll chat. Yep, me at Proud Masculine. And look, thank you everybody for who's watching our videos and following us and supporting us. Keep it up. We'll keep coming. You keep coming. And uh, again, subscribe like, and like. Like, Hit the like comment, button and subscribe. Like, comment, subscribe. And uh, anything you want to hear talked about, anything, any comments, anything, I mean, any topics you'd like to hear about more in depth leave in the comments and we'll definitely look at that and get to it. And uh, again, follow me on Instagram at prob masculine. If you'd like to see me for coaching or get involved in one of my programs, probmasculine.com, pricing and plans, follow the prompts. Can't miss it. And uh, again, thank y'all. And that's going to do it. Thanks again, Thor. Good talk. You bet y'all.